Up next, we're gonna talk about weathering. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interstellar Academy. I guess that bell means class is back in session. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the process of weathering. So the way I'm gonna present this uh, subject here is by um, going over a sequence that I follow. And of course, this is not the only way to weather a model, but it's something that has worked out well for me. So the sequence we're gonna be looking at here is this. We're gonna begin by talking about chipping, then moving on to using your airbrush to create panels. We'll move into decal application. Then we'll talk about applying a general wash. Now this is something that we use to enhance panel lines and build up a little dirt and grime along corners and that sort of thing. And then what I call a detailed wash, and this is just to build up dirt and grime and oil stains. And then finally we'll go over applying pigments such as dust pigments and using weathering kits. So to demonstrate these various techniques, what I decided to do was to revisit my previous builds. What I did was I went through my video library here on the channel and uh, pulled out footage that I felt served as good examples for each of these different steps. So uh, ready to get started here, let's begin. Well, let's begin now with uh, the first step in our process and that is chipping. This is the funnest part of the weathering process for me. And uh, this is a technique that simulates the wearing away of surface paint and markings on a vehicle. So the best example I have in my collection of this type of weathering is this here. This is Boba Fett's Slave One and this model required about eight colors. Now this process can be accomplished in a few ways. The first technique I'm gonna go over is the use of salt and hairspray and I'll also get into using chipping fluid. And you can also use your brush to dry brush scratches and apply splotches. So as I said, the best example I have in my collection is the Boba Fett Slave One. So we're gonna go back in time and take a look at that build and see how I use these various techniques to create that chipped and weathered appearance that that ship is well known for. Let's take a look. The first color applied here was a mild reddish brown, and this was protected with a layer of gloss coat. The next layer was going to be a camouflage gray, and this was to be the first layer I was going to use the salt technique with. Since I wanted a finer, stippled appearance, I decided to grind up the salt even further to create a finer powder. The hairspray used for this technique is this stuff here that I found at CVS, and it was sprayed into a cup. Rather than spraying the entire piece, I decided to brush on the hairspray because I wanted to limit the application to specific areas. I then sprinkled on the salt, and it was allowed to dry. And once the camouflage gray that was sprayed on dried, I then dissolved the salt with water. This is how the pieces look when they were completed. And the same technique was applied to the reddish color that went over the camouflage gray. So a quick summary here is to apply the base color, protect that with a gloss coating, apply the hairspray, sprinkle the salt and allow it to dry, and dissolve the salt with water. All right, well, let's move on now to the chipping fluid, which essentially replaces the salt technique. And for this, I ended up using the heavy chipping formula from AK Interactive. The instructions call for spraying on two to three applications before spraying on the next color. And one observation I did note is that it came out a little thick and clumpy, but uh, that did not seem to cause any problems when using the solution. All right, let's go and take a look at the removal process now. And here's how it all turned out, and as you can see, it worked quite well to replicate the large worn areas that are seen on the miniature. And here's a look at the framing around the cockpit. Another way to achieve a chipped appearance is by simply dabbing the colors on by hand, and I have found a flat brush works best for me. Here I am dabbing on a mahogany color to start with, and trying to make the pattern as random as I can. And that is one thing, by the way, I do find a bit of a challenge with this particular technique, is trying to make the pattern look random and natural. This now is adding a second color on top of the first. 
And here's an example of dry brushing raised details on a piece, which makes it look worn and weathered as well. And again, adding in a couple of other colors. And taking a look back again at Slave 1, I use these brush techniques to weather and chip the backside. Now there's one other technique I wanted to demonstrate here that I did not include on that list, and that is using masking fluid to create a chipped effect. Let's take a look at that. Now another tool that you can use for chipping is using masking fluid. I chose this particular method because I felt confident I could best replicate the look of the large patches seen on this land speeder. You can see here I'm applying the fluid using reference photos to guide me. And I also employ the use of the salt technique on the bottom section for finer scratches and weathering. And this is how it all turned out. I don't resort to using chipping fluid too often because it results in sharper borders, which don't look like naturally weathered paint. But as you can see in this photo, that is exactly the type of borders that were seen on those large patches on the speaker. Well, I have to say that this is one of the funnest parts of weathering a model for me, and I know this can be a little time consuming, but when you invest the time, the results are well worth it. So if you have any particular questions about anything I've showed you in this section, feel free to leave a comment down below. All right, well, the next technique I'm gonna talk about is paneling using an airbrush. So this is something that you might not find yourself doing very often, but I found this is a technique that's useful with Trek models and Space 1999 models, any situation where you want to create the look of panels uh, on a surface so that it doesn't look like one continuous piece. Here's an example. This is a display base I created for Space 1999 Eagle and uh, this is a picture now from the show and you can see what I was trying to do here is recreate that shaded pattern that you see on the landing pad. So the supplies you're going to need for this technique is an airbrush. I think that's really the best way to apply this because it allows you good control over the emission of the spray uh, because you're going to be using the airbrush to make darker and lighter shades with it. Uh, the second thing, of course, you'll need is masking tape. So let's go ahead and get started. And for this demonstration, we're going to go back to my USS Grissom build. I use this technique on the underside of the vessel. Let's take a look. So the two colors used for this process were these craft paints here, brushed metal silver from Folk Art and Obsidian from Deco Art. Here the pieces have been painted with the brushed silver and the first panels to be applied are these larger sections that I have masked off here. I sprayed on several coats of obsidian, taking care to not spray too dark of a coat as obsidian can be a very dark color. Once that was done, the next step was to randomly apply various rectangular shapes using a reference photo as a guide. As before, several coats of obsidian were sprayed on and I varied the intensity as I went along. I of course continued the same process with the rest of the panels. I do think an airbrush is the best way of applying this technique because it allows precise control over the emission of the spray, and this is critical if you want to achieve a variety of shades and intensities. And this is how it all turned out. So, you know, I was a little uncertain where to add in this uh, type of shading technique in our sequence here. I decided to put it here because, you know, you figure chipping uh, or loss of paint on the surface there uh, is something that um, could happen anytime along the way as the uh, uh, ship is getting exposed to different environments and conditions. Uh, chipping also is something that reveals layers down below and this type of uh, paneling and weathering is is more superficial so you could conceivably think that you know chipping and all that stuff could happen but the panels could get dusted over that as well so that's why I decided to insert it here in the sequence. Well, before moving on, I thought I would spend a moment to talk about gloss coats and matte finishes because you're going to need to do more of this stuff as we go along with this weathering process. I've already made reference to using a gloss coat uh, prior to doing the chipping method. So the products I'm going to point out here, uh, now I've used other things like Tamiya gloss coats and uh, when Testers was around, I used their products too. And I've certainly used uh, other, other products as well. 
Um, these in particular are inexpensive, and when you're having to apply multiple coats of this sort of stuff, um, obviously you want to keep your cost down, so this is one way to do it. And uh, so the first thing I'll talk about here is the Ace Hardware Premium Clear Finish Gloss Enamel Coat. This is easy to use, it dries quickly, it sprays on pretty nice, uh, you definitely want to do this in a well-ventilated area, uh, but it's um, something that I reach for, especially if I don't want to load up my airbrush with something I want to move along quickly. Uh, this is a, a nice product to have on hand, and something like this, I want to say, runs around $7 for this 12-ounce can. Next product here is this stuff from Createx called the Gloss Top Coat. I've started to use some of their colors, and so I thought I would try their gloss coat as well. This runs around uh, 8 or $9 for an 8-ounce bottle. Uh, this is a bit thicker, so you do have to thin it down. It's a water-based product, so you can thin it down with water. Um, but uh, this is something you can airbrush on pretty easily, and you have to apply several coats of this stuff to get a gloss finish. Now, this next product I'd like to spend just a little more time talking about uh, because this product in particular now takes the place of the Pledge Floor Polish stuff that many modelers have referenced to using over the years. And uh, the Pledge uh, product has now been discontinued as of a couple years ago. I was meant to get a hold of a bottle of that stuff. I never could find it at the store and always meant to order it on Amazon and never got around to that. But actually, this goes way back now, several years ago at least. I went to the store to try to find the stuff and went to Home Depot and the only stuff I could find on their shelves was this stuff. And that's how old this bottle is because even the label has changed since then. But this bottle can last you a long time. Um, it met about the same description as the Pledge stuff, so I thought I would try it and uh, I found it worked well. It's just I often forget I have it because I have it there in the back, but I finally got around to putting it into a smaller bottle. But as you can see, this is uh, stuff that's uh, very... Um, thin in consistency. It's almost water-like, so you can actually put it into your airbrush without having to thin it. And because of that, it's going to spray on nice and even. And uh, you do have to apply several coats of this stuff if you want to get a nice shiny finish. Just depends on how shiny you want it. But it's very easy to use. It's inexpensive and a bottle goes a long way. Uh, the other thing that this is useful for is dipping your windshields or these clear parts into. Here's a quick video of me doing that now with the Slave One ship. And when you dip this stuff in there and just let it air dry, it really creates a nice, beautiful, shiny finish that makes the stuff look like glass. And once you're done with the excess, you can just pour it back into the bottle so you don't waste it. But uh, it works really well for that application too. Now, once you have your uh, wash is done, that sort of thing. You're ready to tone the model back down to counteract the gloss. What I have found works really well is this um, matte medium from Vallejo. Now, it's uh, not as cheap as buying some of the other stuff. And actually, this small bottle can go a long way. Um, this smaller bottle here runs $3.99 uh, from the model shop that I bought it from. And it's uh, thinned down with water, uh, which I'd recommend doing as you're applying it through your airbrush. Uh, but it is very effective. You don't have to apply a lot of this stuff to tone the uh, to tone the gloss down. And I've used it not only with these applications, but also with figure models. Now, I'll point out here that they also make a matte varnish, which works okay. Uh, I just found it doesn't work as well as the matte medium. So I'd highly recommend this to tone your models down, or at least to bring that gloss finish down. All right, well, I'm actually going to end this part here. I initially thought I would create a video that would go from A to Z on this subject, but it is, uh, as I'm editing the video, getting pretty long, so I thought it would be better to split it up into two parts here, and that would make it easier to follow along as well as to find uh, these particular subjects when you're searching for them. So we're going to end part one here, and we'll pick up the process in part two. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below or email me at intersettermodeler at gmail.com. And that bell means class is dismissed. I'll see you in the next video.